Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you to all who have been subscribing, commenting, asking questions. I really, really appreciate that. Today I'm gonna to show you three ways to use color in Reaper. This is gonna help you stay really organized, especially as your projects get bigger. Also get a, a streamlined workflow, which is really important. Staying organized is super important. There are three methods. One is kind of bare bones and we work to some more automation and uh, customized actions and things like that. So you can go as deep as you want or you can keep it as simple as you want. That's uh, one of my favorite things about Reaper. My name is Isaac Hernandez. I study, teach and make music. Let's get going. All right guys, so the first thing you're gonna Need to do if you haven't done so already is download the sws extension if you've never heard of this it's a whole pack of options and features that gets added to reaper when you download this it's very simple you don't have to know everything about it i don't know everything about it but it's just a click and install and it really powers up reaper for you so take a track right click it go to track color you have sws track color that wasn't there before so now you have that now I want you to go to show color management and we're going to do a couple of things here. So first set custom colors. You have 16 custom colors down here. You can set them to whatever you want. So for example, if there is a color that you hate, like, uh, I don't know, a lime green or this kind of red, whatever you don't include it in your custom colors, you'll never have to see it again, right? If there are colors that you really like blues, greens, like me, yellows, whatever, you can include those in your custom colors and that's what it's going to pull from. For example, if I take a few tracks here and just select a few, right click, track color, SWS, and then I said set, set track to random col custom colors, it's only going to pull from my custom color set. So, and one more time. So if we go right click again, track color, back to the same menu, color management, we have these, uh, this feature, gradient start color and gradient stop. So I'm going to show you how this works, but I want you to pick just two colors. I picked a green and a pink. You could do whatever you like. So now that I've set that start and stop gradient, look what happens when I create tracks. I create one. That's my start gradient. I create another. That's my stop. And then I'm going to keep creating tracks and look what happens. The new tracks get assigned a different color, which is a tone in between the start and the stop. You kind of get this very pleasant color palette going here from the start gradient to the stop. But as you can probably tell, it's quite laborious to go track color as it is track color and then go through three menu, a right click in three menus. It, it takes too long and it defeats the purpose. It doesn't make it faster. So what you can do here, for example, is customize a toolbar and get a custom action in here. You don't have to create one. They're already made. They come with the SWS extension. So what I want you to do, let me show you that again, is right click on your toolbar, customize toolbar, and you're going to go add. And here to narrow things down, you're going to type SWS and then color. And then you're going to go scroll to the bottom and here are the actions available to you. I feel like they're all pretty self-explanatory and you can add the ones that you think you're going to use the most to your toolbar, or you can create a separate tool with all these options. It's really up to you, whatever you want to do. So one action that you could find useful is set selected tracks to random custom colors. So if you select that, you hit select and then close this out. Now it's here. You have it as a button here. Something that you could do is assign an icon to it. All you have to do is select the action on the toolbar, right click it, and then you get this set. For example, I'm going to hit this little TV color right here, close that out. And now that's an option. Hit save before you close. And as you can see here, now I have this. And that was the track I had selected here at the top. So it changed it. If I hit select A and hit that again, every single track gets assigned. A different color let's add another action here customize toolbar add same deal sws color now i want to be i want to bring gradient back so here it is set selected tracks to color gradient select and then i'm gonna assign another icon for this uh, sws color save close and again i'm gonna select all tracks and boom they're back to the way before so maybe you want to select a range maybe just the first 10 tracks set them to a gradient and now you can mess around with that pick a range of tracks i find sometimes this is cool when you do like uh, folders and things like that it helps categorize it helps arrange things a little bit better there's one last action that i want to show you that you might find useful as well 
to get really specific you can write sws color and write children set selected chil set selected tracks the children to same color select close that out let's assign one more icon to this and let's go with this little guy right here save close once more if i select a folder track click that new button that we just created all the children tracks are going to get assigned the f the color from the folder track so you have options here you can set them all to one color you can you know select them all have them on a gradient or set them all to a random color it's up to you so the second way that we're going to use color in reaper is by automating things so we're going to go up to this menu extensions up here on top click on auto color icon and layout. and as you can see i have a couple of rules here layout and that's what these are these items numbered items they're rules and so for example every time when i take a track and i name it guitar that's the filter when i name, name a, a track guitar it's going to assign a random color to it and it's going to assign the guitar icon to it as well the same thing if a bass it's going to get a random color and an icon when i create a folder it's going to get assigned in a random color no icon children track is going to take the color of the parent so the way this works is you add a rule the rule type is what it's going to affect is it going to affect a track a marker a region and we'll talk about priority at the end so here i just wanted to um, affect tracks for right now and the type of track that it, it's going to affect so any track an unnamed folder children of a receive a master track it can get very specific so for right now i'm gonna say drums so any any track that's called that's named drums this is going to be affected now let's set this to a color you right click and you can say it set custom set color so if you want a blue every track that you name drums it, or has the word drums in it it's going to be assigned this color for example let's pick yellow right now say we want to load an icon every time we use a track like that let's use a kick drum for sure check this out oh very important before you get going options make sure all of these guys are enabled otherwise none of this is going to work so now i'm going to go ahead now drums yellow with the icon so what if i say this one is kick drums remember it has to be drums otherwise it's not going to work as you saw if i just type drum it doesn't work as you can see i have other rules here so for example guitar gets assigned a random color and an icon bass gets assigned a random color and an icon so let's write bass here random color let's write guitar here boom i think this one because it already had a uh, color um, assigned to it but no biggie we're gonna set it to a random color so now the other rules that i have here is a folder track gets assigned a random color and all the children tracks get take the color of the parent track because i don't i have a lot of random things going on so for example if i take these two tracks right here the drums took the color of the parent track but the guitar did not why so this is when the priority takes place so for example my highest priority here is guitar so basically no matter what happens if a guitar is named if a track is named guitar it's gonna keep that random color and the icon that's not going to change but for example if i move this down in priority a couple of notches here now it changes so now I, I set the priority that the folder and the children colors are more important than the guitar right so that's when it's going to take the color of the parent track so you can mess around with this in a, a bunch of different ways so another for example another rule i like to have is um any unnamed track i wanted to take a gradient color and for example look what happens here now I'm gonna remove these tracks and create a bunch of new ones. And now when I create tracks, they take a gradient color. So there's something about random colors here. For example, if I write base on my first track, it's gonna take the icon, but it's not gonna assign a color. And the way to change that, if you really wanna track every single time you want your base to always be your green, no matter what, like this kind of lime green. Now when I write base, it's going to take the green and the icon, especially because an unnamed tracks is at the bottom of prior of the priority list and base is at the top of it. The other types of rules that you can add, for example, here is a region. Any region that I name a verse, I always want it to be red. 
So when I go to create a region here, for example, create region from selection, doesn't take the color yet. And I'll tell you why, because we haven't named it. So only the ones that are named versus are gonna take the red color. You can create another rule if you like, any region, and it doesn't have to be named. It can take a color, for example, let's say blue. So now if I go to create another region, it's gonna get assigned that color. Okay guys, the third way that we're gonna use color in Reaper is by getting the Evil Dragon color toolbar. So this toolbar lets you have a one-click access to the SWS color functions that we saw in the beginning without having to set them up. This toolbar is a really good starting place. You can customize it and add actions to it that might work for you just like we did. So it can be a combination. So I put a link in the description for you. So this is prompting you to do two things. One, we already have the SWS extension. The, what you have to do now is download this update down. It's gonna be a zip folder. Now you go back to Reaper, Options, Show Reaper Research Path, and that's gonna open this guy. So what I want you to do is copy the location of the folder. By doing that, you click this uh, address bar, kind of like you would in a web browser. Right click, copy. Then you're gonna go to your downloads where that zip file is, you're gonna extract it, and you're gonna unzip it to that location we copied earlier. So just copy and paste right there. So once you're done with that, you're gonna go to actions, show action list, key map, import shortcut, key map, and open this guy color tool art actions okay so the next thing you're going to do is options customize menus and toolbars you're going to get this guy you click here now i already have the dragon toolbar so you're going to see you're going to get this eventually what you're really going to see is something like this where you what i want you to click is import and in that reaper folder you're going to go to menu sets that's one of the files that you've extracted you're going to get color toolbar it's very important that you set it to floating toolbar number two because that's what the developer set it to if for some reason toolbar number two is already occupied you're going to have to go to that reaper folder menu sets right click the color toolbar and open it with notepad so right here where it says floating toolbar two if you want it on a different toolbar, you need to assign the number that you want it to. It's very simple, don't be intimidated. Don't change anything else, just this thing at the bottom, so at the top. So if you wanted it on toolbar three, four, five, et cetera, that's what you would set it to. Once you've imported it, you're gonna get this menu. So now you have access to that toolbar. So for example, if you go to your main one, right click, switch toolbar, go to the second one, and I've named it, of course, as Dragon Toolbar. So now that you have the toolbar here, I'm gonna create a few tracks. And look what happens. I select one and I just click a color and it takes that color, right? I could do that to a few. So if I select these three, it takes a color. I can select all, set them all to one color, default color. So just like we set actions at the beginning here, this toolbar already comes with actions. For example, we can return everything to um, default color, random colors, one color, we can set the tracks to a gradient and we have this button that opens this magical color management tool. This toolbar comes with a custom color set. So what you're gonna do is load color set from file, go in that Reaper folder. This came from that zip file as well. It's color themes. And you're gonna pick the one for the operating system that you're on. I'm on PC. So you would load that. It uses that custom color and those gradients. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments section. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one.